The following is a special presentation of the WKCR Sports Department. Jockey Shorts will return next week at 9. I won't say, I won't predict 20 wins. I hope with a little, a few breaks, okay, in any basketball game, in any sport, you need breaks to, to be a super winner. We need a couple of breaks, okay? I would definitely say we should get 16. We've got the kind of team that if we take anybody lightly, we can lose. And that means from uh, Yale to Brown to Harvard to Penn to Princeton, if we're not ready to play, we're in trouble. I feel with this team here, on any night, we can win a basketball game against anybody. Good at the top. He moves in. Short jumper. Good he's fouled. What a shot by Alton. Good he's fouled. Lions by 22, 48 to 26 into the forecourt. It's Hassan gives underneath Ricky Free spinning. Thank God. Oh, Ricky Free right there. What a move. 20 seconds to play in the ball game. Bird to the foul line, backing in, looking, goes inside. Ricky Free spins the move, short. Rebound and goal by Georgia Tech. Lions double team, take it away. One minute away from it with eight seconds. A season of joy, a season of disappointment. Columbia Lions basketball, 1976-77. I'm Russ Behrman. A season that brought Columbia basketball back. 26 games, hundreds of thrills. And it all started on November 30th, 1976, at Levy and Jim against City College. A typical opener with an atypical finish. At the uh, midcourt line, now to the baseline with six. The jump of Michael Parker. The Lions have 100. With three, with two, with one. That's the end of the ballgame. The Columbia Lions on a jumper by Tim Gilfoyle hit 100 points. For the first time in four and a half years. The outcome of the City game was no surprise. Rutgers was a different story. The Scarlet Knights had the longest regular season winning streak in the country and a gym that was unbeatable. The barn was worth 14 points alone, so they said, and Rutgers jumped out to the early 7-point 12-5 lead. The crowd sensed the kill. The Lions didn't die. Scarlet breaks quickly, has it stolen away by Bird. Uh, free run, he saves it from going out of bounds. A great individual effort by Ricky Free. Drops it off the love to Bird. Quickly in the corner of Connor to Bird. He's in the lane, he drives. He gives a couple of fakes. That goes underneath the Mitchell, lays it up and in. It would have been goaltending. Mitchell got fouled on the play also. That tied it at 14. Juan Mitchell hit the foul shot. Columbia never trailed again. 39-27, the Lions at the half. 43-27, Columbia early in half number two before Ed Jordan put on a show. Quickly inbound, whipping the ball around the perimeter. Jordan, 20-foot pop, missed it. So that lead is really going down. Go ahead and feel the inbound pass. 43-35, The Knights came within three, 55-52. Even the most optimistic fan couldn't help but think of last year. Ricky Free, Alton Bird, and Juan Mitchell didn't remember last year. Lions are basically sophomore junior ball club. And they're having problems in that stolen by Jim Bailey, but he throws the way to Optimus. Long down for Ricky Free, all alone he does. Ricky Free, the first slam of the night for the Lions. Dance 20 feet away, head of the circle, Rodney Duncan. Rutgers with the three guards. Jordan near side, 20 footer, no good. Rebound, Bailey, no good. Rebound, Bailey, tip, no good. Rebound, pulled by Altenberg. He's ahead of the field. He drives the lane, he lays it in. Altenberg. The Lions have come up with two buckets, they leave 59-52. Bird, 20 feet away, moves to the head of the circle, gets off the free underneath in a crowd, and then free regains possession and lays it in. Nearly lost it. Ricky Free lays it in. Altenberg steals off the inbound, lays it in. The Lions have got it right there. Four minutes to play in the ballgame. They lead 75-65. Two minutes, 37 seconds to play in the ballgame. The Lions lead by 11. 77 to 66. Shane Cotner inbounding right from our broadcast location. He gives it off to Alton Bird. Bird between the circles. He goes into the head of the circle. Beautiful ball controlled by Bird. Goes to the far side. Comes back with it. There he drives the lane and lays it up. No good. The rebound is pulled by Jeff Combs and he feeds out to Shane Cotner. Far side Donahue, 220 to play. Gives off to Cotner. Lions by 11. Cotner runs into Eddie Jordan and Jordan knocks the ball out of bounds. In the forecourt, Elmer Love underneath, 
Oh, Lord, Jeff Combs, but he won't shoot. Smart play. Gives it out to Kevin Donahue. The Lions continue to kill the clock. 2.08 to play in the ball game. Out in blue with it. Long in the corner of it. Jeff Combs gives that side to Shane Cocker at the midcourt line. Lions have played this delay game in practice all the time. They are looking great at it right now. Shane Cotton gives out to Altenburg, standing ovation for the Lions from their forces. Lions with the basketball, they get it up to Cones, long down court, and it's a side play, lays it up there, goaltending, goaltending on Eddie Jordan. And Tom Penders has officially signaled the win now. The Lions are embracing themselves on the bench, 83-74, with 20 seconds to play the Lions by nine. Into the forecourt with six. With five, Lions by ten. Here's the jumper. Short. Rebound with one. That is it. That is it. That is it. Embracing on the court. The Columbia Lions have pulled off the upset of the 1976-77 season. They have defeated the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They have done it convincingly by the score of 85 to 75. Alton Bird. Alton, uh, how do you do it? <laughs> There's uh, 13 other guys, right? I can't do it without them. That's the key to it all. They were all behind me. I had my men with me. All they got to do is get open. I give them the ball the best way I can. That's my job. The Rutgers game is special for the confidence this young team had coming in. Ricky Free predicted a victory on WKCR after the City game. Now listen to game-high scorer Juan Mitchell. People may say that, you know, we were underdogs, but we didn't think we were underdogs. You know, we have a fair shot at it, you know. So we're happy we won because a lot of people don't think we were, but it ain't no need for a great celebration because it's not like if we did something, you know, out of the ordinary. It was so ordinary, in fact, that the win sent New York basketball circles into shock. The Columbia campus became one big party. The Lions became instant media celebrities. And Iona had a goal to shoot for. Break up the Lions. They did, catching flat Columbia 84 to 69. Which brought up the haunting question, how good were the Lions? Last year's NCAA Eastern Regional semifinalists, the Connecticut Huskies, Tom Pender's alma mater, tested the light blue next and lost. Connecticut had made the comeback to lead by seven in the closing minutes. Some lion pressure and some missed foul shots brought Columbia to within one. 15 seconds remain. Lions down by one. He'll take it from the far side. He's guarded off, gives off to Bird with 14. Bird moving on the far side with 12, with 10. Burns to the foul line, begins to move with 8. Puts it underneath, Ricky Free lays in. With 5 seconds, Connecticut has no timeouts. Al Lewis, down court with 1. The shot at the buzzer, the Lions win. The Lions win. It was becoming a habit. Down south, a different script was written. Two one-point games, two one-point losses to Marshall and Georgia Tech. Columbia had lost their 13th and 14th consecutive tournament games, but this was different. The Lions actually had a chance, which is more than they gave the Manhattan Jaspers two days later. Columbia hadn't played their New York neighbors since 1930. Playing their best technical game of the year, the Lions made Manhattan wish they had never heard of Morningside Heights. Pope goes baseline against Hassan, gets the step, puts it up. Wild shot, misses. Bird rebounds, 3 on one fast break. He's got Hassan and Pence. Bird beats Hassan, lays it up and in. What a pass by Alvin Bird. Dave Hassan scores two. And three assists now for Bird, 22 to 10. The Lions lead it by 12. Head of the circle, Chris Dye at the top, pulls up foul line, rejected by Elmer Lowe. He pulls away Alvin Bird. Bird feeds off to Mike Wilhite. Wilhite in the lane, spins by Footer Good. 90 to 62, Columbia. Manhattan proceeded to beat Pennsylvania in the Garden, Army at Army, St. John's at St. John's, Seton Hall at Seton Hall, and South Carolina at South Carolina. 90 to 62, Columbia. On to Greenville, South Carolina. The point said, I think we have a very, very good chance of winning because Furman, Furman did have a good recruiting year, but you know, anytime you recruit freshmen. On a, such a large scale as that, there's a long. It takes a a, a while for for them to adjust. Uh, I think we have a very good chance. We play the Citadel. The Citadel is no sleeper. Uh, we open up against them in the points yet, and I think we should be we should be in pretty good shape after those two tournaments. That was Alton Bird before the season started. Unfortunately, the sleeper awoke in time to nearly sink Columbia. 
If it wasn't for the hustle and the jumper of a revived Kevin Donahue, the light blue may have suffered yet another tournament loss. As it was, with Donahue afire, Ricky Free stepped to the line in the closing moments, seeking to snap a 77-all deadlock. He will try it again. It is short. Rebound is pulled by Donahue. Short jump up and good. The Lions by two, 79-77. But the lead did not hold for long. Tie game, seconds to play. Columbia tried to win it in regulation and then in overtime. Lions playing for the last shot here. Bird with 11 at the midcourt line. Now Lions going to the offense with seven. Bird on the far side with six. One bounce to Donnie. You double teamed in the corner with three. Outside, Bird with two and one. We overtime. Mitchell at the head of the circle with 12. Gives up Bird. Lions going for the last shot with 10. Nine seconds of play. Bird goes into the lane. Underneath, Ricky Free lights it in. Seconds. Timber across. Turn out with four seconds to play. Now the inbounds to Huff. They may not get a shot off. He goes to swing. Long jump at the buzzer. Short. The Lions have won a tournament game in overtime. They have beaten the Citadel 89 to 87. Columbia was in the finals. Let's play comparative scores. Navy, who had beaten Penn by four, lost to Furman in the first round by 23. Navy then beat the Citadel in the consolation by 33. Playing comparative scores would put Furman on top by over 50 in the final. Playing Jim Strickland, their 6'11 center, Furman was on top by 7-2 to two in the final. Strickland had all seven. Columbia fronted Strickland and pulled to a tie at the half. The second half leads seesawed until Furman's ball handler, Ron Smith, fouled out. The result was ecstasy. Ryan. Opening up a 7-point, 73-66 lead, 5.59 to play in the ball game. Andy means into the fourth court, intercepted by Free, gives off Alton Bird. What a move by Bird! Was underneath to Mike Wilhite, Bird scooping it under his leg. Wilhite in the lane, super gun! Lions, they can't even sit down now, they are just so excited. With one, steal in the backcourt by Shatz, he throws it up from the midcourt line, off the back, the Lions are points that are classic champions. 93 to 79. What a ball game for the Columbia Lions. Kevin Donahue hugging James Brown. You can say the Lions are an ecstatic team right now. And the Lions now, Alton Bird is lifted to the uh, basket. They are cutting off the net here in Greenville, South Carolina. The team went wild. Out popped the champagne. Souvenirs were grabbed from everywhere, including... Mike, uh, rumor has it you still have the net. Where is that net? Well, the last time I had it, I gave it to one of the coaches, and after that, I never saw it. So possibly one of the coaches has it. It is something to treasure, along with Ricky Free's all-tournament trophy for a season high of 29 points against Furman and Alton Bird's Most Valuable Player Award. Typically, Bird was modest about his role. I guess the main thing was for me to go one-on-one -on -one and dump it off, and if not, then shoot it, you know. Yeah, that's what happened. No big deal. His 26 points in the championship game was also his season's high. It was hard to get used to. Here were the Lions, champions of a tournament for the first time in nine years, holders of a winning record at the end of December for the first time in six. And the month of January featured a schedule concocted strictly for wins. Seven games, five at home, all beatable opponents. From the sublime to the ridiculous. The light blue took two weeks off, then pounced on Scrappy Wagner in a scoreboard operator's nightmare. Now the Lions, with a minute to play, have the chance to set that school scoring record into the fourth court Gene Shack. Shots to the foul line, boosts the basketball, retained by Gene Benson, a foul. And Gene Benz may not realize the symbolic importance of these foul shots. Benz, with the one and one right here, he hits both, and the Lions have a new school scoring record. The first is good. They have tied the record of 115 points. Here's the second. It is good. What a scoring night. 11890 for the Morningside Machine. Columbia mugged Cornell at home, survived Cornell on the road, ransacked Fordham, pillaged Yale, and pummeled Brown. Only a tight Lafayette zone kept the light blue wind skein in single digits. Come early February, Dartmouth and Harvard easily fell. In the process, the fans responded to Columbia basketball, and the Lions responded to the fans. When Alton Bird broke Elliott Wolf's assist record for a single season in the Yale game, Levy and Jim became a love-in. 
And here's Steve Klein dribbling with the right hand against Combs. One hop down to Ridakis. Free flops it away. Take it off by Bird. He's got free on the left. Cotton on the right. Bird down the lane. Gives the free. Tries. Puts it in. And that is a season record for Alton Bowers. He now has 141 assists. Elliot Wolf now in second place on the season record. And I think it's appropriate that Ricky Free is the man who scored the basket. Making the announcement right now, we'd like to congratulate Alton Bird setting the new Columbia single season assist record, 141. Alton Bird blowing kisses to the crowd at center court, raising his hands up high, saluting the crowd. Alton Bird, I'll tell you, some players just will go to their head. Alton Bird, to him, it's just a passing moment. The Lion reappeared at the home games, so did the fans, and so did all those home team baskets. Bird switches hands, goes down the lane, throws up a scoop foot of the foul. Oh, what a move by Alton Bird. And finally, Jeff Combs intercepts. Gives it off to Juan Mitchell. He drives, lays it in. Pretty scoop by Mitchell. Throws it down in the signals up a good. Off the bat from Combs. Bench looks to the corner, Alton Bird. Now the other side, Jeff Combs. Backs up to get the pass to the foul line. Jumper good. Jeff Combs. But there was nothing more crowd-pleasing than the reappearance of the dunk shot. Ricky Free style. Hooper tries to drive, gives off Edmonds, taken away by Free. He's going to come down one on none. He's going to jam it. I always wanted to stuff in a, you know, college game, or even a high school game, you know, because you couldn't stuff. You're always in the playground. So that's the only time you can throw it down. And I was happy. Back to the basket, gives off Flores, hands to a running Davis, intercepted by Ricky Free. He's ahead of the field looking for the donkey something. Fans love it. Ricky Free. Or the reappearance of the drive. Elmer Love style versus Harvard. About foul line. Love, he's going to drive. Hope, oh, good. Elmer Love. Mitchell at the free throw line puts up the jumper. It rolls around. Love taps it up and in. Elmer Love got position that time. Just nudged the ball back over the rim as it dropped out. I think it was mainly just, you know, concentrating on doing my job for once. <laughs> I don't know, like, I've been letting everything, you know, all the pressures and stuff kind of get to me a little bit. And tonight I just went out. And concentrated on doing what I can do and turned it out all right. All right was hardly the word. Sensational was more like it. 6-0 and in the Ivies for first place, 14-4 and overall. But all were not convinced. Columbia had been relying on forcing turnovers with quickness and using superior talent and depth to wear out their opposition. In the Ivy League, Penn and Princeton do not fall quite so easily. In fact, Columbia was able to get away with less than stupendous basketball in compiling their stupendous record. Pennsylvania at the Palestra, Princeton at Jadwin, both 5-1 and one in the league. Stupendous basketball would have to return. Not against Penn. Kevin McDonald burned underneath, Stan Green got hot from outside, and Tim Smith surgically took Columbia apart. After a quick burst put Columbia only five points down in the second half, the Quakers roared to seeming command. Penn is going to slow it down with a 13-point lead. 4.35 to play in the ballgame. Crowley with it on the near side. Gives off McDonald. Gets away from free. Pulls up 17. What a go! Kevin McDonald has destroyed the Lions tonight. 84-69. to Pennsylvania went into a four corners to salt the game away. Instead, they lost their momentum, missed their foul shots to the delight of a roaring Columbia contingent of 300, enabling the Lions to stage a frantic comeback. 58 seconds to play in the ball game. Well, I'm looking. It's near side bird. Drives in outside. Well, I foul on jumper. Good. And he, there's a foul on the play. It goes against Pennsylvania. 84-81 Penn. The comeback fell short. Tom Crowley to the foul line. Lions fans making noise. Here's the first. It is off the back. No good. Rebound, Mitchell. He gives off to Mike Wilhite. Into the fourth court. Out in Bird. Bird to the foul line. He gives outside to Ricky Free to Combs. Now to Bird with 26. Goes underneath. Score by Tom Crowley. Crowley stealing it. And the Lions looking for the foul in the backcourt. And they got a foul at Out in Bird. To the foul line, Crowley. The pressure is on. Here is his first. It is no good. Rebound is pulled by Crowley. Drives down the lane, lays it in. He's fouled. 10 86, Columbia 81. 20 seconds to play in the ballgame. Big play. Tom Crowley went from goat to hero in the space of a rebound and a bank shot. The Quakers held on 86 85, but there had been a comeback. There would be a rematch. 
stupendous basketball would have to return. Not against Princeton, at least not by Columbia. The Tigers played their infuriatingly patient style, poured it on before a sellout crowd and a local TV audience. With Columbia down by nine, Elmer Love was hit with a rebounding foul against Princeton sharpshooter Frank Suwinski. The ensuing developments knocked all life out of the light blue. Two technical foul shots coming up for Princeton, plus the one and one. And Frank Suwinski, a man you don't like to see taking the foul shots, will be on the line. Here's his first. It is around off the back and good. Chance for six points right here for Princeton. And another technical foul has been called on top Enders. This is going to cripple the Lions. Four more coming. He is five out of six. 31 to 17, Princeton. Bob Roma was murder inside, and all the Tigers were a fire outside. Columbia fans could look to the rematch at home. Most probably had forgotten Tom Pender's preseason warning. I think if we get an injury to a key person or two, we're going to be in, in deep trouble because uh, we don't have that big man uh, to cover up for a lot of mistakes. And I think our, our top and most talented kids, that, that means Alton and, and Ricky and Elmer, are the kind of kids that are going to be very hard to replace if any of them get hurt. Tom Pender's didn't mention Juan Mitchell. The 6'5 sophomore forward had been somewhat of a surprise for the Lions, their number two scorer and rebounder, the enforcer, without a doubt Columbia's most improved player. 9.35 to play in the ballgame. Omelchenko feeds off a racing Roma. He's going downtown on Mitchell. Mitchell drops, knocks the ball away. Cotton recovers. And Mitchell is writhing in pain. Mitchell had twisted his left ankle on a Jadwin mat and sprained it so severely he would be out for the season. So would the Lions. Mitchell injury robbed Columbia of their speed man on the fast break, their muscle man underneath. It was a terrible weekend for Columbia basketball. Basketball club chairman Sheldon Prechel died in his home the next day. The bright season paled. Easy victims at Levian became killers on the road. Brown destroyed Columbia's Ivy hopes on 39 points by Brian Saunders and some futility by the Lions. The far side, then 10 footer, no good. Rebound is pulled by Kottner, goes back up with it, drives the lane, lays it up, no good. Rebound, tipped out to Bird, foul line jumper is off the back, no good. Rebound, Bird drives down the lane, quarter, no good. Rebound, Ed Bernard, fights without and Bird, foul Bird. Columbia had to stall at one point for nearly seven minutes against a reluctant Yale team to win in New Haven by just six. Columbia had beaten Yale by 27 the month before. Three more wins could still give Columbia an NIT bid. Back home where the rematches with Princeton and Penn had the Lions recast from challengers to spoilers. And Columbia's fast break slowed to a Princeton crawl. Columbia led early. Glove with the ball on the left side. Hawks by Roma. Gives off to Kottner at the head of the key. Right side it goes out out and Bird. Bird loops to Love. He gets a step drive the side. Scoops it in. Elmer Love puts the Lions on top, 8-6. But Princeton controlled at the end. And the shooting is severely hurting the Lions right here. Roma feeds off Omalchenko into the forecourt to the far side corner. Lions are going to have to tighten up the defense here. Underneath, back to Oswinski. Misses it, gets his own. Up no good, gets his own. Up no good, gets his own and lays it in. Frank Swinski with four tips offensive rebounds, 45 to 33. Princeton by 12, their biggest lead. The Tigers by 17. The story was much the same against Penn. A comic first half saw each team shoot about 25% and baskets hard to come by. And the shooting percentages get worse and worse and worse. Alton Bird comes into the forecourt. Lions in the four corners, Penn playing the man-to-man. -man. Bird gets away, gives off free, baseline jump back, no good, rebound, Will Hyde is good. Do you believe we got a basket here? Mike Will Hyde laid it in off the free miss. In half number two, Penn came up with two crucial three-point plays to hold off Columbia by five. Bobby Willis inbounding, 2.45 to play in the ballgame. Alley up to him, and a one he plays it in, and a foul. Fence gets hit for the foul. Seattle Lanetto, guarded off by Dave Hassan. Lanetto in the backcourt, double team, gives off to Smith. Now one bounce underneath college, a three was in, he's fouled. There were still two games left. Harvard served up the final indignity by catching Columbia at the buzzer and beating the Lions in overtime. Hoop gives to Rogers at the top, 
Caught it off by Will Hyde. Rogers comes in and it's a circle underneath you. One bounce. Here we are. Call it. Push it in. Harvard goes on top. 71 to 69. With an NIT bid, a cruel joke, and Princeton set to clinch the Ivy, Columbia played one final game. Loose and carefree, everything clicked. The Lions went out a winner. By 36 over Dartmouth, with a basket by reserve guard Tim Gilfoyle that will not soon be forgotten. Pretty good season for you, Tim. You didn't miss a shot from the floor. <laughs> well, I didn't take too many of them, of course, but uh, that's... Uh... That's, it's, a nice, it's a nice statistic to have, you know, you know, you know it only was five shots. Eight seconds to play, and before good time you, the long jumper is around short, rebounds on the tipped up by Gilfoyle, that's it! At the buzzer, I don't believe it! I don't believe it! Sam Gilfoyle, who was going for me, <laughs> excuse me, what a moment! The ball had ricocheted off Gilfoyle's dropped hands and banked in at the buzzer. 6 of 6 for Gilfoyle, 16 of 26 for Columbia. The season had ended. It was time to look back. Shane Cotner, Gene Vence, Alton Bird, and Elmer Love express what some of the Lions will remember about the 1976-77 campaign. You can't remember just the up, which would be wins over Rutgers, Connecticut, Manhattan, and Furman. You know, you got to remember losing to Harvard in the overtime. In fact, you probably remember the losses more than you remember the wins. You know, I think we, we, we hung out together pretty well this year. There were, you know, times where people could have gone off on their, you know, their own or on a tangent. And, uh, you know, we hung tough and still had a better season than I guess most Columbia, you know, followers had expected us to. A lot of growth, <laughs> a lot of age, you know. It's uh, been a hectic year. A lot of things have gotten in the way, you know, but all the blame goes on us for not getting in the tournaments and everything. There's no out except for us, you know, and our performance on the court. So I'm proud that we, we've won some games and we've proved some people that we've that we can win, you know, that we can get people back up again. I'm glad people had that we I'm glad we've put faith in a lot of people. Uh, it's unfortunate that we haven't played well down the stretch, but uh I'm glad that we've proved that we can win some games. Some joy from winning, you know, a uh, tournament down in South Carolina. And a little sadness, too, from not doing as well in the Ivies as, you know, we thought we would do. So, I don't know, it's an up and down season. A good season. I feel pretty good about it. But the questions remain. Elmer Love, Juan Mitchell, and Shane Kotner answer this one. You particularly disappointed about the way the team finished. Do you think the team maybe peaked too early this year? Um, I don't know if it was a matter of peaking too early. I think it was a matter of running out of gas at the end, really, because it's like um, we're more of a small team, and I think you know the wear and the tear of the season got to everybody at the end. I don't know. That's always a problem. Uh, I don't think we peaked too early. I don't really think we peaked at all. It's just. But probably we, I don't know, we might have wore down, you know, mentally and physically, you know, the traveling and stuff. But I don't really see that as a fact. I mean, people like to say that to, you know, probably make things, you know, seem better. But I don't really know what it was. Uh, that's a possibility. It's it's really hard to understand what's happened. Uh, my prediction at the beginning of the season that we go 16 and 10, and uh, that's probably what we'll do. But uh, we sure did it a different way than I expected. <laughs> How much did the Mitchell injury hurt Columbia down the stretch, Coach Penders? Chris, when you talk about injuries, well, people say you're crying or making an excuse, but when you lose a player of Juan Mitchell's caliber, who averages 16 points a game, and it was at the time he got hit, hurt, seven or eight rebounds a game, I think his last four or five ball games, uh, it's really hard to lose a player of that quality, at least when you're in a situation where we are, where we're thin anyway, uh, where we're not too big up front where we lost Ed Shockley before the season even started, uh, who was our starting center last year. It puts a lot oh, a bigger burden on everybody. And uh, I think that was the number one factor in that we didn't finish strong. Uh, but we're close. Most evident thing or the, the biggest factor is, okay, you go to a Columbia home game now and you see all the seats filled. The seats were jammed to see the squad that broke three team records most points and field goals in a game, and best foul shooting percentage for a season, 
three individual records for a season, most assists by Alton Bird, best field goal percentage by Ricky Free, and best free throw percentage by Juan Mitchell, and tied one individual record, most assists in a game, by Alton Bird. And as Ricky Free says, there's always room for improvement. But I'd rather win 16, 17, so next year we can win 19 or 20 in the year after than 21 or 22. And each year, you know, we just win more and more games. The bottom line showed 16 wins and 10 losses, but there was so much more to the Lions this year. It was a season for Tom Pender's one-liners, James Brown's psych maneuvers, and nearly a winning record for Buddy Marr's much maligned freshman. A season for the Altenburg Pass, the Ricky Free Dunk. A season for Kevin Donahue's hustle, Dave Hassan's rebounding, Tony Della Carey's spirit. For Tim Gilfoyle's perfection, Gene Schatz's jokes, Joe Vitalich's foul shots. A season for Bruce Immerman's gum and Lee Racefeld's tape. This Columbia basketball season will go down as a disappointing success. 14 wins in the first 18 games, and then but two the rest of the way, including a less than inspiring Ivy League record. But despite all the might-have-beens, should-have-beens, or could-have-beens, it was a season that brought Columbia basketball back. For WKCR Sports, I'm Russ Behrman. Good night.